What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the fourth installation of Finding a Head Coach. Now today, as we do every time we do an installation of this series, we will be going over a coaching candidate for the Detroit Lions, a dude that they can look at, a guy that they can interview and bring in and potentially become the head coach for the 2021 season. And today we are going to be looking at Bill's offensive coordinator, Brian Dable, for the head coaching candidacy. Look at his strengths, look at his weaknesses, look at what he's done this season in the NFL, and talk about whether or not he could be the right head coach for the Detroit Lions to go out and hire. Now before we get into the video, if you you are new to the channel and are enjoying this Detroit Lions content, please consider liking the videos and subscribing to the channel. It only takes two seconds out of your day to do so, and it helps the channel out more than you could know. So if you could do that, just take those two seconds to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you never miss an upload. I'd be greatly appreciative for it. But with all that being said, and without any further ado, let's get into talking about Bill's OC, Brian Dable, as the potential head coach for the 2020 season for the Detroit Lions. Now, Brian Dable is not the most talked about coordinator in the Motor City. He's not the, you know, Robert Sala. He's not the Eric Bieniemy. He's not, you know, this guy or that guy. He's not the big name on the block when it comes to Detroit Lions fans when they're looking at head coaching candidates. But Brian Dable is still held in very high regards by many NFL organizations, many NFL franchises, and many teams looking for a new head coach in the 2021 season. And I have no doubt in my mind that Brian Dable will be a head coach in the NFL next season. It's just a matter of where he's going to end up. Now, Brian Dable, as I mentioned, is the offensive coordinator for the Buffalo Bills right now. The Buffalo Bills have one of the best offenses in the NFL, and Brian Dable is a big part of that. Brian Dable is a real good offensive mind. He's developed a lot of the young talent and put all of their talent that they've acquired over the years in the right situation to build one of the most fierce and ferocious passing attacks the NFL has seen in a very, very long time. Now, if you look at the Buffalo Bills stats as of right now, as of week 14, the Buffalo Bills are currently the third passing offense in the NFL. NFL with 3,547 passing yards, 30 passing touchdowns with only nine interceptions. Josh Allen has gone from a very intriguing and very talented prospect and a very talented rookie or young player to becoming one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL and being one of the more dangerous quarterbacks to play against on Sundays. And Brian Dable is a big part of taking that talent and taking that potential and molding it into the great player that Josh Allen has become. So that's one of the players, for example, that Brian Dable has been able to mold and shape into a great football player just based off the pure talent level that Josh Allen had coming out of college. But you know, that's not the only example. There have been several others. There have been several other guys that contribute on the team right now that, you know, Brian Dable has got there and he's put them in good positions where they had talent, but he, you know, puts them in good positions to make that talent shine and to mold them and to, you know, take that talent and make it into a great player versus just great potential, which is something I love about Brian Dable. He's very good at doing that. And he's done that with a couple players on the Bills roster now. You know, the Bills rushing attack is also not a bad rushing attack. It's not top of the NFL, but they do still average 102 rushing yards per game by the team and with, you know, averaging four yards per carry on top of that. So, you know, not a great rushing attack by the Buffalo Bills offense, but it's very good. It's good enough to get through games. It's good enough to rely on when they need to. And they are a very good offense that relies heavily on the passing attack, but has a very solid complementary run game to complement Josh Allen and the passing attack. And that, I believe, is what really makes this Buffalo Bills team truly dangerous dangerous on offense is they're not one dimensional, although they're much better at passing. They can still run the ball very, very effectively. And if you need to drain six minutes off the clock on a final drive to just seal the game out, to close the game and get out of there with a victory, Brian Dable's team can do that. Brian Dable's and the Buffalo Bills can run out that clock. They can do it. They don't do it as often as you might like to see, but you do see occasionally when the Buffalo Bills need to run the ball, when they need to run the ball, when they should be running the ball, they do do it effectively, even if that's not what they're best at. Now, looking at those numbers, right, the third best passing attack, a decent and complimentary run game to Josh Allen in that fantastic passing attack, you would say those numbers look pretty darn solid, right? You'd say, okay, well, I would take the number three passing attack, although the Lions have a very good passing attack of their own this season. You know, I would take 102 rushing yards per game by the team because that's something the Lions aren't very accustomed to is a good running football game and especially a complimentary run game to Matt Stafford. But the numbers get even better when you look at who they actually played this season and the competition and the defense that Brian Dable has been coaching against. 
So we're going to start with last week's game where the Buffalo Bills took on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now the Pittsburgh Steelers are 11-2 right now. They were 11-1 coming into that contest with the number one defense in the NFL from a scoring standpoint. And the Pittsburgh Steelers are still the number one scoring defense in the NFL. They don't allow a lot of points. They allow less points than anybody else in the NFL this season. And Brian Dable and the Buffalo Bills put up 26 points on the number one scoring defense in the NFL, which is the second most points allowed by the Pittsburgh Steelers defense in the entire season. So Brian Dable went in with his Buffalo Bills squad with Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs and Devin Singletary and all those guys around him. They went into that Pittsburgh game as an underdog. The Pittsburgh Steelers had the number one scoring defense. They have the number one defense in a lot of metrics. I think it's like 20 plus categories that they are number one. And the you know obviously the Pittsburgh Steelers are a very, very good football team, especially on the defensive side of the football. And Brian Dable went in and his offense put up 26 points, which might not sound like a lot, but that is far better than what the average is against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And as I said, was the second most most points scored on the Pittsburgh Steelers all season. You might say, okay, well, that's one game. What else has he done versus top defenses? Well, in week two, the, the Buffalo Bills played the division rival Miami Dolphins, who coincidentally are the second scoring defense in the NFL. And in that football game, Josh Allen, Brian Dable, and the rest of the Buffalo Bills put up 31 points on the number two scoring defense in the NFL. 31 points, which again is far, far above the average that the Miami Dolphins give up in the season. And, you know, again, very similar to the Pittsburgh Steelers game. That is the second most points the Miami Dolphins have allowed in a single game this season. And the Buffalo Bills still have to play them again. So we'll see how it plays out, I believe, next week or the week after. The Buffalo Bills and the Miami Dolphins clash again very, very soon. So, we'll be, so we will be able to see that yet again. We will, we will be able to see that clash in that matchup yet again. But again, you the Buffalo Bills, Brian Dable, Josh Allen went into Miami and they put up 31 points versus the number two scoring defense in the NFL. They've also played the number three scoring defense in the NFL with the Los Angeles Rams defense, who is, as I said, the number three scoring defense in the NFL. And what did they do against the number three scoring defense in the NFL? The team that allows the third fewest points in the NFL, they dropped 35 which is the most, the most points the LA Rams have allowed by a lot this season was put on them by the Buffalo Bills and Brian Dable. This is why Brian Dable is going to be a head coach because he puts up points. He gets in the end zone. He puts his team in good positions to succeed. And with the Buffalo Bills having a very talented defense to complement that offense, they are obviously very good. There's a reason they're 10 and three. There's a reason they're a great football team. There's a reason they're going to be one of the favorites in the playoffs. It's because Josh Allen, Brian Dable, and that Bills offense are great. They put up a lot of points versus really good defenses. I mean, versus the number one scoring defense, they put up 26. Versus the number two scoring defense, they put up 31. Versus the number three Three scoring defense, they put up 35. They've also played the New England Patriots, who are the seventh scoring defense, and the Kansas City Chiefs, who are the eighth scoring defense in the NFL. In those five games, the Buffalo Bills are four and one, with only with the only loss coming to the Kansas City Chiefs, who are the only team to really hold this offense back, who are really the only team to be able to shut down Josh Allen. And Josh Allen did not have the greatest day against. But you know, if you're facing five of the top ten defenses in the NFL from a scoring perspective, and you walk out of those games four and one and you score 35 points, 31 points, and 26 points respectively on the third, second, and best scoring defense in the NFL, you're doing something right as an offensive coordinator. You are doing something right as an offensive head coach. And you know, a lot of Lions fans think we do need an offensive guy. A lot of Lions fans think we are struggling on the offensive side of the football. And if we were able to put up more points and stay on the field a little longer, that would help the defense out a lot. I don't necessarily stand in that group, but I understand where they're coming from. I think both sides of the ball need to improve for Detroit. So if we do go with an offensive-minded coach, Brian Dable would not be a bad option for the Lions to look at or at least give a shot in the Motor City. And, you know, you look at all those top five defenses, right? You look at Pittsburgh and Miami and LA and New England and Kansas City, and you might say, okay, well, that's a really, really tough five-game stretch, especially, you know, that's a third of their game so far in the NFL season. A third of their football games have been against top 10 scoring offenses or scoring defenses in the NFL, and the Buffalo Bills are still the ninth scoring offense in the NFL. They still scored the ninth most points in the NFL this season while taking on five of the top 10 scoring defenses in the NFL, including the best, the second best, and the third best, respectively, in the Pittsburgh Steelers, the LA, or the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Miami Dolphins, and the Los Angeles Rams. So, you know, even in facing these great defenses, Brian Dable is still able to put up a lot of points and still is able to have his team as the ninth scoring offense in the NFL right now. As again, 
even after playing all these really, really good defenses. Now, my only real concern with Brian Dable, and the only thing I really see as a negative to me, is that before the Buffalo Bills, he wasn't very good. Before the Buffalo Bills, I believe he was in Cleveland, he was in Kansas City, and he was in Miami. None of those stints really worked out for him. None of those stints was he really a really good offensive coordinator, a really good offensive mind. Some of that I think has to do with selection. Some of that I think has to do with talent. Some of that has to do with, you know, a couple of different variables in my opinion. You know, that's the big thing for me is he hasn't shown me consistently that he can be a great head coach. He hasn't shown me consistently that he can even be a great offensive coordinator. Yes, he's doing great this year, but his history and his track record make me second guess and make me take a second look. You know, in Cleveland, I believe he was there for a year or two and got fired, had one of the worst offenses in the NFL. You know, in Miami, did not have a great offense either. Even in Kansas City, who historically has a very, very good offense most of the time, even there, the offense was just average under Brian Dable. Now, he did go to Alabama for a year, I believe, won a national championship, came back to the NFL felt and looked very different and looked much better as an OC. But, you know, that, that lack of success long-term scares me. But again, you can't deny the fact that Brian Dable has done something special with this Buffalo Bills team. And you can't deny that the Buffalo Bills are one of the best offenses in the NFL. And a big part of that is their play calling and their offensive coordinator. As I said in the beginning, there is no question whether or not Brian Dable will be a head coach next year. The answer is yes. Somebody is going to hire him. Somebody is going to give him a chance. The Buffalo Bills are already looking for the replacement. They're already looking for the next guy up. They're already looking for their next offensive coordinator because they know Brian Dable is going to leave. They know that somebody is going to hire Brian Dable. Will it be the Detroit Lions? I don't know yet. Obviously, I'm not in the building. I don't know what they're thinking. I don't know where they're going with the head coaching situation as of right now. But don't be surprised if we bring in Brian Dable for an interview. Don't be surprised if we interview him and see if he can do something and see if he can impress the owners. Don't be surprised if we give him a shot in the Motor City because although he might not be the big name guy, he might not be the biggest name coordinator out there to be a head coach, he is a good coach. He is coaching a very good Buffalo Bills team right now that he has built and he has molded into his own image and he will get a head coaching job somewhere in the NFL. The only question about it is where. Well, all that being said, that is all I got for you guys today for the installation of finding a head coach for the Detroit Lions. Let me know what you guys think about Brian Dable down in the comments below. Would you be okay if he was our head coach? Do you want him as our head coach? Where do you rank him among the you know potential candidates that we've talked about so far? Let me know all that and more down in the comments below. If you could, drop some more comments about potential coaching candidates that you want to see on this series. But with all that being said, that is all I got for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you all tomorrow with more Lions content. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye guys.